Yeah, one of the themes that I develop in my book is that uh, I, you know, I'm, I've worked in engineering and computer science for 40 years. And um, for most of those 40 years, I harbored what I now recognize as an illusion that um, when we create a technological artifact, that 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 the result, the, the product that we produce is the result of uh, human cognitive decision making. Uh, in fact, I coined the term digital creationism in my book mm. for this idea that these technological artifacts are things that we um, have designed through a top down intelligent design deliberative process. Um, I now realize that's actually not true. Hmm. Uh, and it's particularly not true of complicate, complex software systems because the engineers that are involved, they, first of all, they never start with, you know, just a blank text editor and start writing code. That's not the way it happens, right? The way you build software is you take pieces of software from here, pieces of software from there, and you combine them. And you stitch pieces of software together to, in effect, create a mutant of hmm. uh, those original pieces of software. You can think of the, the code that you're working with as almost like the genetic material hmm. in that software. I call it the codome in my book. And um, the software engineer is kind of the agent of mutation in this process. And they create this mutant. And most of these mutants die out, but a few of them survive. And the reason that they survive is often inexplicable. So we tend to think, for example, that, um, well, all right, so the, the people who designed Instagram must have been really good software engineers because it took off and was very successful uh, in the marketplace. But really, no. Uh, actually, there were thousands of you know, very similar kind of mechanisms that lots of people were experimenting with. And most of those mutants simply died out. And the ones that survived survived for very complex reasons that are often in retrospect very difficult to to discern and so they're not it it's hard to uh explain this process as the result of top-down deliberative design mm -hmm. it's really much more like a darwinian evolution so if you accept that perspective then the reality is that we never were in control and so when people talk about fearing, you know, that we're going to lose control of the development of AIs, well, I have to say, we're not going to lose control because you can't lose something you never had. Mm. Um, mm. So if you understand that this process is, is kind of co-evolving, it's actually, it's a co-evolution, not just an evolution, right? It's not just software mutating and then, you know, facing a survival of the fittest kind of Darwinian selection process. It's, it's more complex than that because the humans involved in this process are changing as well. Um, I write a lot of software myself. Uh, I have for my entire career. I mean, I've been writing software since the mid 1970s. And um, I use a lot of software tools. And I've come to realize that the languages, the programming languages and the tools that I use very, very strongly affect my thinking, that they've changed my brain, my way of thinking, my, and they, they strongly affect what I, what I do with the software. And so the software has changed me and then I'm changing the software. And so there's a, there's, you know, mm -hmm. mutation occurring on both sides of the mm -hmm. screen and interacting with each other. Okay. And that co-evolutionary process is really what's driving uh, the development of software more than this sort of classical view of top-down intelligent design of, uh, of these engineered artifacts. Thank you so much for checking out this clip from the Data Talk podcast. To watch the full episode, you can either go to the Experian blog. The URL is experian.com slash datatalk, or you can click on the link, which is found in the description of this video.